So here's the footage that we're working with today, a guitarist in front of a green screen cyclorama. Before we get started, we need to make sure that we're working in the correct color space. Compositing tools in general require the images to be in linear gamma. However, usually the images that we work with are either in a log gamma or in gamma 2.4. And if you do compositing on an image that is not in linear gamma, the output might be inconsistent and the tools will behave unpredictably. So step number one is to make sure that we are always working in linear gamma. And the way to do it is come to your project settings, go to color management and where it says color signs, make sure that you have chosen DaVinci YRGB color managed and hit save. And you can see something changed. When you choose DaVinci YRGB color managed, DaVinci Resolve by itself makes sure that when you go into Fusion and when you're using compositing tools, that it sends a linear gamma image into the tools. If you come to the LUT icon here and you disable it for a second, you'll see a dark and saturated image. This image is actually your linear gamma image. What Fusion is doing is it's applying a Fusion view LUT on top of this to make it more pleasing for us to work with because we are not used to looking at images that are in linear gamma. However, this LUT is just a viewer LUT the underlying operations are still happening on this linear gamma image. In result, the tool to extract a key is called the Delta Kia. So let's bring a Delta Kia in and add it to media in. And now I'm gonna bring Delta Kia into screen one and my media out is gonna be on screen two. And for people transitioning from After Effects, this is equivalent but better than the key light plugin that you have in After Effects. And on the right here, you see a series of tabs in the Delta Kia inspector panel. And the way to think about Delta Keying is to start from the left and work your way through each tab on the right. We are going to pull a green key. So choose the background color, take the color picker and come really close to your subject and pick a color. Resolve will highlight the transparency using a checkerboard overlay, but I don't like that overlay. So I'm going to hide it. So three dots, unselect checker underlay, and unselect the checker underlay from both your sides. So now you can see what's happened is the black areas is where we are creating a mat and our goal is to make everything but the guitarist into black. But as you can see, we have not yet pulled a very clean key and we are going to start refining it as we go. Come to the show color channel icon here and click it once and it'll show you the mat that's been created for you. The gray areas that you see inside here are semi-transparent. Our goal should be that anything that we want to keep should be pure white and anything that we do not want to keep should be pure black. But right now in this key, this guitar area is semi-transparent, which means that once you have the image behind this, the image is going to start peeping through these black and gray areas and we do not want that. So once you've done that, the next tool that's handy for us is the gain slider. The gain slider will add more greens to your selection so that more areas can become transparent. So let's see what happens when I start moving the gain slider to the right. The more I go to the right, it starts adding more greens to the transparency. But the more I push it, you can see that my object of interest has also become more transparent, which is not what I want. All the tools within the Delta Kia are about finesse. You want to adjust these tools very minutely so that you don't affect your subject of interest. The other thing to also keep in mind is that you're only really interested in the region that's very, very close to your subject. I really don't care about pulling the proper key on the left hand side here where my subject doesn't even go to. The reason is I can later add a garbage mat and then cover those out very easily. So what I'm really interested in is getting this area transparent. So I'm going to start pushing a bit of gain and not too much. I'm just going to go maybe that much, 1.1 maybe and leave it at that. The next tool for us to affect is a balance slider. Now, there are three primary colors, the reds, the greens, and the blues. Since our original key was for the green, what the balance slider now does is that it tries to balance the reds and the blues in the image. If you move the balance slider to the left, it makes the reds more opaque. And if you move the balance slider to the right, it makes the blues more opaque. Now, since there's quite a bit of red in the image here, if I start moving the slider to the left, you'll see that more of my person of interest starts becoming opaque. The holes that I had, the grays that I had are starting to go away. But again, I don't want to go all the way to the left because that's now going to impact other parts of my key. 
and it's going to erode the edges. And you can also see if I go all the way to the right, it starts making more of my subject of interest transparent and I do not want that. So it's again all about finesse. I'm going to bring this just to about 0.35 and leave it there. So at any point of time, we need to be careful that whilst we are getting the key correct, we don't impact the edges that we have. Now we're done with the key page and the next page is to go to the pre-mat. The goal of the pre-mat page is to choose all the greens that were left out when we initially selected the key. So when we selected the key, our color picker picked a specific shade of green, but not all greens were selected. And that's why you see these whites showing up here. These were the greens that were not selected. Our goal in the pre-mat is to pick more green shades that need to be transparent. With the pre-mat selected, go very close to your subject and draw a box around places that are white. So say something like this. These are green colors that were not originally picked. So I'm just going to add a mask. So if I just do a Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y, you can see that that's what's happened. It's added those greens back into our key. And I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to go here and say, I want these greens to go away as well. Now to help me find other places that may be also green, that's not very visible for on this monitor, I'm going to come to the gain gamma option here and temporarily increase the gamma to see any other specs that might be present that we are interested in. So all these white dots that you see here are still greens that have not been selected. So I'm going to go here and add more. I'm just going to add as much as possible without affecting my initial mat. The challenge with the pre mat selector is that whilst it adds more greens, it also affects the edges of the initial mat that we had. And that's what we need to be careful about. Now, once you've done your pre mat, what you'll notice is that the pre mat would have affected your edges and you can see that the edges now have become a bit inconsistent and you can fix this by coming to the erode slider and just eating back at the edges so, so that you get it back. You don't need to do too much. Something like 0 0.002 is more than enough. And you can see that the hair is coming back and you've not lost it anymore. Once you fix the erode slider, you can now come and affect the soft rain slider. What the soft rain slider does is that it indicates what the impact of the pre mat selection you made was. So let's say if I boost the soft rain slider all the way up, you can see more of the areas are being affected by the pre mat. And if you bring it down, it goes back to where it was. The idea here is for you to finesse the soft range slider so that both the soft range and the erode sliders work together to get you a good mat. So I'm just, I'm just going to move it just a bit so that my mat looks accurate. You will know that by looking at how the hair works. My hair looks fine. If I went too far, it's going to start eating into my hair. You can see that here. And if I move my erode too far, that's going to eat into my hair as well. So these numbers look fine to me. And then add a bit of blur to the edges so that your transition between the two masks are not harsh. Now that we're done with the pre-mat, let's go to the mat tab. And the mat tab is the most important tab in the Delta Kia process. The mat tab is where you define the mat accurately. The lower and the upper threshold defines what is meant by black and what is meant by white. So as I increase the lower threshold up, it means that any value that's below 0.05 now is considered to be pure black. And if I bring my white threshold down, let's say to 0.5, this means that any value over 0.517 is considered white. So you can play with the black and the white thresholds to make sure your mat looks even better. But the goal here is to not move it so far up that you start creating holes within your image. So you've got to be, again, you've got to finesse this. So I'm just going to go just a bit up. You can also see some transparencies here. I'm going to bring my whites down to cover up those transparencies. But what now this has created is that the fine details in the hair has kind of lost because I've, I've brought my white threshold so far down that it's not able to capture the fine details in the hair. So I'm just going to go back and bring back the fine details just a bit. It's always going to be a yin and a yang between the finer details like your hair and getting a perfect mask. The next is very subtle adjustments again, and you can do that using the clean foreground and the clean background sliders. If you start 
pushing the green, clean foreground slider up. Take a look here. You can see that the holes that have been created gets filled in. But you can also see that some of the places where we are not interested also starts getting filled in. So we don't want this. This is wrong because we need the hand to be separate from the guitar. So again, it's all about finesse, something like this. And then you can go and clean the background that will make your blacks even blacker. But again, the more you push it, you can see that areas of interest starts going away. So be very careful with how much you push this. Now, at the beginning, I told you that I'm only interested in the areas next to the person and I don't really care about what's happening outside here. And the reason I said that was because I'm going to introduce a garbage mat and tell Resolve that anything outside this garbage mat, just make it black. I don't care about it. And the way to do it is by use the B spline tool, bring it in and with the B spline selected, just create a mask around the person. And what you'd want to do is to rotoscope the person's movement. So I've created a mask, bring the B spline into the garbage mat input of the Delta Kia. So this one. So I'm going to connect that to the garbage mat Kia. And you will notice that the, the person has disappeared and I need to invert this mask. So to invert it, choose the Delta Kia, go to the mask tab and in the garbage mat, choose invert. What's now happened was all the area outside has gone away. So I did not need to spend all the time worrying about how to key it. I've just said, I don't care about that anymore. But this mat is only for the first frame. We need to make sure we have manually rotoscoped it throughout the entire movement of the person. So the way to do it is go all the way to the end, make sure you're still covered. So you're basically just going to play with the mat. So I can see that. I want to bring it out. So this is very basic manual rotoscoping. So let's go halfway through and you just play through the entire clip to make sure that the person is always inside your mask. The next step is what's called a holdout mat. A holdout mat is a mat that tries to fill in the holes that is left within your area of interest. For example, you can see this gray part here, which is transparent, which should really be opaque. So we fix that by using a holdout mat. So to do a holdout mat, just bring in a new polygon. And in this polygon on frame number zero, I'm just going to add a very basic mask like this. And I'm going to send this polygon into the solid mat input, which is this icon here. So I'm just going to add it to that. And you can see that it's already made that place white. So it's just saying that wherever the solid mat is present, I want you to make that white irrespective of what. And now we've just got to track that throughout the frame. So let's go to the end. It looks OK. Just trying to make sure that it's always inside our area of interest. Again, this is just manual rotoscoping one more time. Cool. So I've gone through and made sure my holdout mat is entirely within my area of interest and all the holes are also filled in. So I have this clip that I want to add behind this guitarist. So bring that in, merge it with my Delta Kia. And make sure that your media in two, which is your background, is actually the background node for your merge and your Delta Kia is your foreground node. Once you've done this, the next step is to color correct the foreground and the background to make sure that they look like they are within the same environment. And you also want to color correct so that any remaining greens on the person is removed completely. And to see how much spill still exists, what you can do is with the Delta Kia selected, go to the Matte tab and in the replace mode, instead of soft color, changes to source. And you can see that there's still a lot of spill that's on this person. And we want to eliminate the spill. And the way to do it is after the Delta Kia, introduce a color corrector node. And in the menu, instead of colors, choose suppress. What the suppress menu does is that the colors that you ask it to suppress, it's going to remove it from your image. And here, I'm interested in removing the greens and a bit of the yellows. So I'm going to bring the greens all the way down and reduce the yellows as well so that my spill is now suppressed. So you can see the green tint that exists on the left is no longer here on the right. So here's the before, here's the after, the before and the after. Now, after you've done that, you want to send this out to the color correction tab inside Resolve to do a final color correction to make the foreground and the environment look cohesive. 
Now to work with this in the color tab, you need to send the mat that we've just created to the color tab so that the color tab does not affect the areas that are not affected by the mat. Media out one in Fusion always goes to the edit page, but you can add multiple media outs and media out two onwards, they go to the color tab. So to do that, just introduce a media out node and this media out will be the output of the color corrector. Now, if you go to the color page and you start affecting the colors, you'll notice that everything gets affected. That's because we haven't supplied it with a mask yet. And because we have created a media out two in Fusion, what I can do is right click and say add source. And this source is now the same as this media out two. So what I can now do is connect this to my mask and boom, only my foreground is now affected. So I'm going to re reset my, and because I suppressed the greens and the yellows here, I'm going to reintroduce the greens and the yellows, but only in the midtones. So I'm just going to move my gamma a bit to the greens and the yellows to bring some life back into it. And then I'm just going to do a holistic color correction. So I'm just going to decrease my gamma to make it darker to match the environment, decrease the gain, increase the gains, add a bit of saturation to make them stand out. And this is purely your, your choice. It's, it's normal color correction. There's nothing special that's going on here. So that's it. That's how you pull a perfect key using DaVinci Resolve. Pulling a perfect key is about creating a perfect mask. And I have an in-depth tutorial here that walks you through all the different ways in which you can create masks and mats in Resolve. Go watch that next. And until next time, bye.